Good day, all, and welcome to the virtual conference on applications of commercial sensors. In this particular segment, we're going to be talking about wearable, wearable SBO2 and sleep posture monitoring systems for obstructive sleep apnea patients. Uh, to give you a brief overview of what we'll be talking about here, first we're going to be going over exactly what obstruction, obstructional sleep apnea, or OSA, is. Why do you need to know about it, and why is it worth designing uh, products around? Uh, following this, we'll talk to you about what we actually designed, uh, particularly our SpO2 collection system, the software we developed to detect sleep apnea events, and the graphical user interface to go with it, as well as we'll show you some of the live subject testing we did with the data to verify that everything we built worked. Uh, last but not least, we'll talk about the actual, we'll talk about the posture training system we put together, made uh, designed to follow the movements of a sleeping patient. We'll talk about the hardware and the production of the etch of the program itself, what we did, how we did it, and we'll also follow that up with live with live testing. Uh, if you're the sort of person who wants to quickly get to work with data from a pre-existing device, then our software and designs would probably be a good starting point for you. So to start off, what actually is obstructive sleep apnea? Obstructive sleep apnea, by definition, is the collapse of your airways during sleep, particularly your, uh, your soft tissues. Basically, if you've ever seen someone snoring, what you're, what you're seeing in that case is something in that person's airway is obstructing airflow and ultimately causing sound, but what we care about here is that obstruction of the airway. Something has happened with your soft tissues that is ultimately blocking the movement of air to and from your lungs. What this means in sleeping patients, patients who have obstructive sleep apnea, is that their blood oxygen levels will drop, and their body's self-defense mechanisms will ultimately awaken them in, during the night, or at the very least give them a less restful sleep. You can imagine how this affects their general quality of life, being tired during the day, difficult, uh, difficulty sleeping, possible choking hazards in some cases, and we want to design a system that could help address this. Um, just a few statistics, about 20% of adults have been known or are known to have at least mild obstructive sleep apnea, while 7% have at least moderate obstructive sleep apnea. So this is a, a, very, a common problem in the adult population. So to actually observe obstructive sleep apnea, blood oxygen levels are a useful tool. And these oxygen levels, which course, which generally speaking, correspond with how much oxygen the patient's getting, can be measured through pulse oximetry. Pulse oximetry uses two different wavelengths of light to determine the uh, percentage of your hemoglobin that contains oxygen. And Medicare describes an obstructive sleep apnea event, or an, a sleep apnea event, as at least a, 4 a greater than 4% drop in blood SpO2 for a time frame of 10 seconds or more. Uh, and an additional fact that we found during research was that 65 to 87 percent of mild to moderate obstructive sleep apnea patients have their symptoms based on their sleeping position. Particularly, if the patient is sleeping on their back in the supine position, then their, air their airways are more likely to collapse and thus block oxygen flow. And if you think about it, this, ma this makes sense as gravity is now acting on those soft tissues, uh, forcing them to close, as it were. So in order to address this, this issue, we designed a system that would monitor the, monitor the patient's blood oxygen levels and determine if they were having an obstructive sleep apnea event in real time. Uh, to do this, we developed a system using a commercially available SpO2 sensor, as well as developed a custom algorithm in MATLAB that would, that would scan for sleep apnea events. And for the end user, so that this can be taken away from the hospitals into the patient's home as, as desired, we designed a standalone graphic user, inter user interface or GUI control unit for it. Additionally, to help, tr to help train patients to sleep in a different position and thus alleviate their obstructive sleep apnea events in general, we designed a posture training system using a microcontroller, particularly a TICC2540, combined with an accelerometer, a vibrator, and a buzzer. 
Uh, this is what our system looks like in general. We will have a computer at its, at its heart doing the bulk of the processing. And on one end, we will have that communicating with a communicating wirelessly via Bluetooth with a, S, with a commercially available SPO2 device. And that will be the portion that we'll talk about initially. So our monitoring system uses the commercially available Contact pulse, pulse oximeter. And we designed MATLAB code to pull the SPO2 values from this existing device. The device came with its own custom software, but using a package sniffer device, we reverse engineered the information this device sent to the computer. And from it, we, started we were able to take samples of blood SPO2 at a rate of 10 hertz. Um, if, the patient's S if the user's SPO2 value dropped below a certain value, um, based on that Medicare definition, then an obstructive apnea event could be noted based on how long or for what percentage of time it dropped below that value. Uh, additionally, as mentioned before, we made a standalone GUI for visualization and control, controlling things like deciding what value the patient's threshold would be. And this GUI would also save the data as text files so that they could be reviewed by physicians later on. And here we have a video of our GUI actually in action. The left plot shows the most shows the most shows the last 30 seconds of SBO2 data read in from the pulse oximeter, while the right graph shows the shows 30 seconds of heart rate read in from the pulse oximeter, which it spat out both. So why not record both? Uh, you will note that the most recent pieces of data on both plots will match the information displayed on the pulse oximeter in the bottom right. So this shows that our system was appropriately reading in and reading in the data. Additionally, in the at the bottom center of the GUI, we have an apnea event button, which shows when our SpO2 monitor detects that an apnea event has occurred. In this particular video, we're using an ideal patient with with non-moving SpO2 data, so a healthy patient would not experience an apnea event. So you're not going to see that button light but the functionality is there. How do we know it's there? Because we tested it with, lives, with a live subject. Uh, what we have in this figure is information from a test subject who we uh, attached an artificially high uh, threshold to. Uh, the top graph shows the patient's SpO2 data, which we had them manipulate by breathing in a particular way. The middle graph shows our threshold flag determining whether or not the SpO2 values were at or below that uh, threshold for what might be an apnea event. And the bottom graph shows whether or not the information had been below threshold long enough to actually be an apnea event. So the bottom graph is what actually shows if an apnea event is occurring or not. And through our testing, we, we were able to confirm four very important points. Uh, in location A, the subject's, uh, the subject's SpO2 value was at or below that threshold for about 8.2 seconds, for about 8 seconds. And as you'll see on the bottom graph, the program did return that as a sleep apnea event. You'll note that the duration is different, but, that, but we'll talk about that shortly. In part, B, we can, in part B, we see that for a very short duration of uh, threshold, for less than 4 seconds, the program did not report back an obstructive apnea event. If you remember, the Medicare definition for a sleep apnea event says that it has to take place over an extended period, and this shows that our program can filter out the shorter duration events, basically noise. Location C shows that our program does have a time lag between uh, a low SpO2 event and declaring it an apnea event, which is what we, what we would expect given the Medicare definition. And lastly, point D shows that once the, pay, once the subject's SpO2 value rises above that threshold again, very shortly the program will report that the obstructive apnea event has ended. So, our, so through this testing, we found that our algorithms did appropriately detect obstructive sleep apnea events in an appropriate time frame. Now let's move into the second part of the project, which is the alert training system. What we want to develop is a wearable system capable of detecting a sleeping posture and sending alerts to the patients 
to encourage them to avoid the supine posture. We found in literature that for supine-dependent OSA patients, they present the majority of their events when they are lying on their backs. In addition, we found that patients can be trained to sleep in certain prescribed positions. The system consists of these three main components, a three-axis accelerometer, a buzzer, and a vibration motor. The three-axis accelerometer is placed in the chest of the patient and the sensor data is transmitted via Bluetooth Low Energy using the CC2540 Texas Instrument microcontroller. To provide the alerts, we use a buzzer, which we can control the frequency and the duration of the sound from the same microcontroller. In addition, we provide haptic feedback using a vibration motor placed on the wrist of the patient and its control using a data acquisition card. In order to predict the sleeping postures, we use a supervised machine learning algorithm, in particular a decision tree classifier, developed using the MATLAB uh, statistics toolbox. For these supervised machine learning algorithms, it requires that you have a subset of data with the associated labels, labels which means that you know what class it's associated to. In our case, will be the sleeping postures. In this graph, we see on the x-axis, we have the sequence of posture starting from supine, left side, supine, right side, etc. And in the y-axis, we see the three components of the accelerometer. We will provide this subset of data into the model, and it will be able to find patterns on the data that are specific for each of the postures. We'll need to build this model the first time, but after that, the model will be able to be used uh, without modification. In addition, if we look closer into the data, we found that because of the accelerometer being placed on the chest, we can record the, os the oscillation due to the expansion of the chest, which we didn't use this data in our uh, sleep event detection, but it could be used uh, in the future to detect when the, the patient stops breathing. In this slide, I will start playing the video and we can see how the posture of the subject is detected in, in real time. So we'll see when the patient goes into the right side, the algorithm will pick it up and display it on the screen. On the right side, we have the flow diagram on how the alerts are provided. If the patient spends a certain amount of time on the supine posture, it will start receiving vibration alert, starting with short and going to longer durations. Then we'll start receiving by, uh, sound alerts with the buzzer and then combining both of them. If the patient still doesn't change position, after a while it will resume receiving all the alerts again. And you will see the patient is, uh, the subject is lifting the arm and he was told to do so when he was getting uh, a vibration. So to summarize the project outcomes, we designed and built a system to monitor obstructive sleep apnea events and the patient posture. That included MATLAB software to interface with commercially available pulse oximeter. This will be very useful if you are planning to use SpO2 data for one of your projects and you are not interested in developing the pulse oximeter yourself. In addition, we develop a graphical interface to report and store the data, and mach machine learning algorithms to detect the sleeping posture using a statistic toolbox from MATLAB, and then provided sound and haptic feedback to the patient to alert them and, and encourage them to avoid the supine position. For both sus subsystems, the, uh, the event detection and the posture prediction, we verify them using live data. With this, we want to thank Professor Troy Eagle and Sophie Permana for their advice and the support uh, during the medical instrumentation class. And then we included a source, a list of sources that we use during the presentation. And if there is any question, please tweet them to the authors using the following hashtag. Thank you.